Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. I do a motorcycle racing TV show called Team Chicago Challenge. My website is teamchicago.tv, teamchicago.tv to contact me and I want everybody to send me comments. I'm more than interested and I will reply. My email is teamdan45 at gmail.com. So um, in this show, we're going to, we're ending up in the, we're in the 21st century. We're at the 2007, 2008, 2009, and we're getting into the 2010 and 2011. So that's what we're going to talk about. I'm joined with my granddaughter, Alyssa. Alyssa is my son's daughter, my son's only daughter, come to think of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking at my photo album. I mean, I've been so fortunate that I have put these photo albums together and and it gives us a good basis to start telling the stories of the history, my racing, the TV show, and the Team Chicago concept. So, Alyssa, what are you looking at? It's, you're looking at that cruise chief yeah. story about Chris Young. So this is the Chris Young Crew Chief Award. So what is that? Okay. The reason I put this together, now I've been racing the Weir National Endurance which are the four hour, six hour races. We're a Western Eastern Road Race Association. I really have raced it down in 82 and 83, I have trophies. And I really got serious about getting back into it in 95. So in 95 all the way, and we won the championship in 99 and we won the championship in 2002 in middleweight super, super stock. And in the, all this time, we're running this endurance thing. And you cannot do the endurance thing Without a crew, you do need people helping you. Now, a lot of times I'd show up would just be myself and Steve Carson and and Phil Caldwell, and and we would work with other teams. So, if there's another team next to us, and we would always pit next to someone, we're going to help each other because we never had enough people. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, there were certain members of these different crews that were really crew members that I thought they should get awarded. Because if you watch NASCAR, it's a big deal to be the crew chief of the year. So I said, well, we should do that with Weir, the crew chief of the year. So it just so happened, Mark Young's a good friend of mine who, who grew up in the Chicago area, motorcycle racer, and he put together Vespa Racing, and he had one of the top teams ever in the Weir National Endurance Series. And his dad, Chris Young. Now his, his dad, at one time, he was a pilot, and he flew for uh, Archer Daniels Midland when they lived down in central Illinois. And that's a whole other story about the ice racing in, in Decatur. But, but Chris and I, I mean, Chris and I were good friends. Mark and I were good friends. And when Chris passed away, I felt it was time that we should name an award after him because he was a great, I mean, like I said, Vesper Racing was one of the top teams ever running the Weir National. I mean, there was there was a uh, Team Suzuki for a while, and then there was um, the Semoff Brothers won the championship for a while, dominating teams. But Mark Young and his team was really a great, and his dad gives a little credit. So you can see here, this was a ballot. So I printed up a ballot. I took surveys during the season, whose name should be on the ballot, and then I. Um, put a ballot together and I handed it out to all the crews and they could vote and I at least had a trophy for someone to be the crew chief of the year award. Yeah. And I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so let's see what's next. Now, here's another story about Weira. And I'm pretty proud of these posters. So I, I should point out, I, I am lucky my brother Jim, we worked together and we designed t-shirts and we designed posters. But this is when Weira hired me to start putting together posters. Because a lot of these, we're a race in Western Eastern Road Race, the, the premier road race organization in the country. But how do you get people to come to the races? How do people find out about the races unless you send posters out to the dealers? Right. So we're hired me. Here's one of the posters I put together for Groton Raceway. It was my concept. I laid this all out. And then I put the mailing list together to all the dealers within 100 miles of Groton Raceway. So they would put the poster up and, you know, an extra 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 100, 200, 300 spectators would. And 
and the benefit of having spectators. What, what you got to understand about road race, even like SCCA, which is the big automobile road race association, is basically amateur racing. Mm -hmm. So SCCA or Weir will rent the racetrack for a certain amount of money. Then they hired everybody. They hired the corner workers. They bring in the ambulances. And it's a big expense. And there is no unlimited packet. So the teams and the racers pay a higher entry fee for road racing than like dirt track racing. The, only, the whole economics of road racing per se, even with SCCA, is different than when you talk about dirt track racing, whether cars or motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And where is the only one running the endurance thing? And for me, the National Endurance Series was perfect for me. I got the ride, I got sponsorship. To do the TV show, I could put together a great TV show. So, so when Weir asked me to help them, and they did pay me. I mean, it isn't like I did it for free. So. Yeah. And we're getting towards the end of the first part of the 21st century. And uh, this may be one of my favorite T-shirt designs I ever did. Josh Smithmore joined Team Chicago in like 20, 2007. And along with Josh, I got his mom and dad. And, and so it was really great that they joined in 2009. I figured I'd do a shirt showing the, the tour of Team Chicago in a different spot. So I'm pretty proud of this this T-shirt and this artwork. So we're going to show you the artwork as we're talking. And I think we should probably, from 2009, I'm going to come up with one of the races we ran. And uh, I'll show some of that footage right now. From 2009, Josh Smithmore and me racing the Weir National Endurance Series. And now, as you're getting a third hour racing, Josh Smithmore is on the Team Chicago, four and six, Yamaha dealers, race car service, Dunlop, hot bodies, Torco racing fuel and oil. He has moved us up to 13th place. Bezu Suzuki is still leading. TBR is running in second place. Army of Darkness is in third place. As Army of Darkness heads back into the pit, Ben Walters has turned the bike over to Sam Fleming. Army of Darkness is back, now running Yamaha R1. They are sponsored by FisherTechnical.com, ArmyofDarkness.com, Michelin, Walt Schaefer's, Vesra, RoadRacingWorld.com. Sam is back to have big fun racing the big four Yamahas to get heavy racing As we see Josh right behind him heading on to the front straightaway with the Team Chicago R6. As we see Dre Beatty who's going to finish it up for Vesra Suzuki get by that dial and company number 888. Suzuki, they are up front right there. Billy Eckridge running a good solid team. You got TBR right there. Delke Motorsport is leading that middleweight super stock class. And we're going to jump ahead as I take over to finish up this four hour event at Roebling Road. Put the fuel in. A little out of space. Hold on, where's the bike? Seems like everybody has forgotten from last year. Now I got four and a half gallons. We're out of gas. This should take the whole shot. Don't worry about shutting off and spilling. That's it. We are empty. Let's go. Grab the fuel tank. Let's put the gas cap back on. Okay, gang. As they get ready to start the fight. I'm on the Team Chicago. Four and six. But Josh tells me the rear tire is totally gone on the right side. Totally gone on the right side. But I'm out to do battle. I head on out in the Team Chicago. Four and six repair. Yamaha. Yamaha dealers. Race tire service done up. Secure oil. That's Torco Racing Oil. CP Racing Fuel. Pitbo Stan. GMD Coffee Track. Regina. Wintech Leather. Alpine Star. Let's head through the first corner. Let's look at Roebling Road, the big sweeping, turn number one. 
heads over to turn number two, which is a very fast left-hander. And with my tire worn out, get Billy Eckridge going by in that BCI racing with the 1000 Suzuki. But my right-hand side of this tire is worn out, so I gotta be careful through turn three here. Over to turn four now to tell the panel so I get back on the gas. I swing it wide and I bring it in tight. Heading over to turn five. Which is just off camber downhill. I'm gonna take it nice and easy. The tire is worn, right side. Now we come to another fast game that leads us on the front straightaway. This could be turn seven and eight, or six and seven. On to the front straightaway. We're going to jump ahead to the last few minutes of the race. Let's see how Team Chicago does. We've had a little tire problem. This track has been murder on the right side of the tires because there's so many right-hand corners and such a high-speed racetrack. As Chuck Esworth throws the checkered flag to end the Bridgestone, we're on National Endurance. First round, 2009 season. As I come on, back shoot, heading on to the front straightaway. I go up by a bike that's off on the track. I didn't catch the number. I head down the front straightaway. Team Chicago finished in third place in the middleweight super stock class. Delcay Motorsport was first. Rat Rocket was second. As I get the flag, we are third. Chuck throwing the checkered flag in the heavyweight superbike class. Best was first. Billy Eckert second. Army of Darkness third. Middleweight superbike. It was Suzuki Rider Development. Zyvex Ghetto Custom third. Heavyweight class is TVR over AR Motorsport. And the lightweight class, Blue Ridge Performance. To get up the win, Blue Ridge. Blue Grass, second and third, and that's it for Roving Road. Round one, Bridgestone, we're on National Endurance. As I applaud the corner workers, we could not be out here racing without the corner workers. A great day for Team Chicago as we start the 2009 season. All right, Graham, so we're getting into 2010, and... I see this poster here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, when I go to the dirt track races, the Nationals, all these guys have something to sign. I have people come up to me once in a while and say, can I sign an autograph? I have nothing to sign. Mm -hmm. So I laid that out because one of the things I'm pretty proud of is that I road race, I dirt track race, I get to run off-road stuff. I get to run AMA Enduros, I get the ice race. So I really have been blessed that I've been able to do all the different racing I've done. Now, dirt track, I'm a proficient motorcycle racer. I've won a few, I've ran second, third, fourth. I'm, I'm, I don't pretend to be any national star. I mean, I have friends that are national stars, not me. But with Wera, we did win two titles. So that's my road race. I got a road race picture, and I got a picture at me racing at Peoria, which is one of my favorite pictures. So I got those two pictures. I put that together so that when I go to different events and people might ask me for an autograph. I mean, I do do a TV show, but it isn't like I'm no star. Yeah. You know? And I put my sponsors, like I said, I am always grateful mm -hmm. to Yamaha, the Yamaha dealers to uh, Dunlop Tires, Race Tire Service with Drew, Steve Drewbaker, uh, AirTech, who give me body work for my race stuff, and four and six. Like I said, my whole road race career is 100% <coughs> connected with um, uh, road racing, mm -hmm. with four and six. The whole road racing career is tied into four and six I mean, could not have done all the racing I did without Jimmy and Ed Hilton. So I, I always am grateful to that and all the guys that worked with Florence. Mm -hmm. 
So, Gramps, I didn't really know that you raced all the different, like, dirt track, road tracks, and everything. So, who's this guy right here with the skeleton? When you talk track? about dirt tracking and road racing and being a star, I mean, this is Dave Aldana. Now, if you've seen the movie on any Sunday, which I talked about earlier, I, I mentioned Dave Aldana back then. Same age as me. But he got into racing way before I did. He grew up in California. Mm -hmm. And the more I talk to Dave, the more I'm impressed that he did all his own work. Now he's 18, nine, 18 and 19 years old. He's working and building his own engines. He tells me he goes to uh, Axto's shop and dyno testing his engines, building his own bikes. And he became a national star. And it turns out, you know, but he was a real, I mean, he's a real national star. We got to be pretty good friends. So here's a picture of Dave with his bone leathers, which he became famous for, but he also was a road racer. I mean, when he would show up at uh, a weir event, because he rode with Team Valvoline, and they're all road race people, and he didn't really know any of them, but me and him would talk because we were dirt track guys. We had that kinship. Mm -hmm. But with road racing, he told me, when he raced for Honda, you know, even though he, he never won number one dirt track, and he came close. In 1970, it was Gene Romero, Dick Mann, Dave Aldana, and Jim Rice going into the final event. And any one of them four could have been number one that year. But he ended up crashing out early. So, but... When he raced for Honda at a factory ride with Honda, they paid him two hundred thousand dollars, and we're talking like nineteen seventy-two. Wow! So he was a smart cookie because he told me he invested in real estate in California back then. So now he doesn't have to work. Yeah. He came back and raced a couple races. Now I'm not. I'm going to show my interview with him at the Neil King because that's the next thing we're going to talk about. So I'll show you the interview with him at the Neil King birthday. And then I'm also going to explain to you about the Neil King birthday, which I have a couple pictures a little later, and we'll show those pictures right now. But like I said, I've been lucky to be in both worlds, to be able to race road race and dirt track and also do the ice racing and other stuff. I've been, I've been blessed. Yeah. The Neil King thing is an annual party that they've been putting together, and it was in January. They would call it the Neil King birthday, but all these famous racers, all these ex-national number guys would get together, and it gave me another opportunity to do another TV show or two. So I'm going to show you a clip of my interview with Dave. Then I'm going to show you some of the scenery from the Neil King thing. Now, Neil King also passed away, and uh, they continue that party on. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that, and I think we're going to come to the end of this episode. We are at Donaldson Cycle, which is in the St. Louis area. We're looking at a statuette of Neil King on his BSA Gold Star. Neil King racing at Ascot Park nearly won every final event. In fact, one year he won every final except one. Here's a, one of his gold stars that he raced at Ascot Park. He also won the AMA National for BSA. Now, when I started racing, Neil King has already come to the Midwest and he was selling parts and racing his Yamaha at Santa Fe Speedway. In 1970, he was the Santa Fe Speedway track champion. He was very helpful for me and for my racing career. Now we're going to talk to another BSA racer, Dave Aldana. What was your deal with BSA? When you were factory BSA, running with Dick Mann, Jim Rice, you guys were all together on the same team. 
Was it a unified team, or did you have a different situation, oh, each was, one of you guys? It, we were all independent. We rode for the fact, and we had the same sort of heading, factory rider, but there was no team uh, uh, as, as you would consider a team. He, Dick Mann, or Jim Rice, didn't ever share anything with me, but made their bikes go good. Everything was top secret in their own little camp, but uh, there was no... No team orders. So what did you get from BSA? What we got from BSA, we got a salary from uh -huh. BSA, which was very lucrative at the time, and we got parts. And if we needed parts that BSA couldn't supply, they would give us a purchase order and we'd go uh, buy it with a purchase order. So they were, in a sense, making everything possible, and it would be up to our discretion on what we spent the money on. I never was told... So what were the parts? Just the engines, not the... The chassis too, or is that separate also? The, 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 that would be what we get a purchase order for. We get a purchase order from BSA for, the, say, five hundred dollars, and that would we go to Barnes Wheels and get three or four Barnes Wheels. If we needed a frame, a Trackmaster frame. We get a purchase order, and they'd give us the money to go buy that. So they would enable us to build a bike with all the parts that we needed, whether it be cams or. Now, see, mine was basically a stock BSA, so it didn't cost them a whole lot for me. But now, Jim Rice had all kinds of trick cams and dick, uh, trick uh, uh, hybo uh, primary chains made and clutch hubs made. None of that was made available to us. So who would I? Gene Romero at the time was working with Axto. And he, Who paid, was, he paid, they gave us so much money, and he used some of his money to pay for dyno time. Right. And, and that's where some of his... So who did you work with? Who was doing your engine I building? Did, I did, myself. You did all the work yeah. yourself, put yeah. the bikes together? And, and, I, and I would take them up to Axto dyno and run them on the dynamometer to see if I could make them go any faster. And that's where I learned a lot of stuff in, in regards to what Gene was doing. You know, they tried these certain, they, these were called the Axel megaphones. Right. For a certain length and, and uh, diameter that worked really good that you couldn't buy anywhere. So, who was your mechanic? Did you have anybody else you were working with? You're or looking was, at him. <laughs> so, you did all your own work. Now, who, who was Jim Rice working with? He had a guy named, uh, God, his name sits me now, but his name, he was a big tall guy with dark hair. Uh, because like on any Sunday, he's riding a three-cylinder, too. Did you ever experiment with the three-cylinder I, I did, on but dirt? it didn't, didn't work out very good. As a junior, I rode a three-cylinder in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, and I won the mile race there. Then when the uh, Sacramento mile came around, we tried to convert our road race bikes, which had the wrong head angle, wrong uh, engine wheel weight, you know, bias front and back, and it just didn't work. And they wanted us to ride the three-cylinder, so they wanted to see the public, they wanted us to show the public that they were raceable when in fact they weren't. And I crashed mine. Uh, Gene Romero refused to ride his. And, and now the road race bikes, how did you didn't build those though? That, no, no, those were done by the factory. Those were done by the factory and you would ride those? those. in-house factory, we would just show up and ride those. Just show up. So, we But it, back then there was only a couple road races. Uh, those were maybe, I think, six or eight at the most, along with the other 15 dirt tracks. So. And how about the short tracker? We took care of those ourselves. You took care of that yourself, and you did all that work yourself, too. Thank you, Dave. Every year, a good number of dirt track national number riders show up for the Neil King birthday at Donaldson. In the back row, I spot my friend, Daryl Hurst. He's going to tell us about his win at the Astrodome. Darrell Hurst uh, claimed the fame as the 1975 Astrodome. Uh, 323 entries, 60 get the race, I qualified second fastest. So that day went so great for me, it was so easy, and no problems. I never changed gear, tires, or anything. I just went out there, practiced. You only got two practices at the Astrodome, four laps apiece, and uh, my guys managed to sneak my bike down, and I got three practices, four laps apiece. The third time I went by, the referee, Duke, was pointing his finger and shaking his hand at me. He said, Daryl, don't come back. So, but that day was, was really just a piece of cake. I mean, it, when everything's going great, you don't have any problems, it's really unbelievable. Here today at uh, Donaldson's Cycles at Carl and Kate and Kim for Neil's 75th birthday party the sixth time around, I think. And uh, Neil was a great guy. We were friends from back in the 60s. Uh, I spent the night a lot of times at his house in my truck working on my motorcycle before and after Granite City and before Santa Fe. 
we were in Granite City on Tuesday night, and then we went to uh, Chicago and ran Santa Fe on Wednesday night. Carl Donaldson and the dealers around St. Louis promoted and put on the races at Granite City, and they really did a, a marvelous job. Really hated to see it when it stopped. But uh, the dirt track racing in the Midwest back in the 60s and 70s which is fantastic. We could race seven or eight times a week during the summer. Thank you, Daryl. And we can only pray that they have another reunion at Donaldson in 2021. Now let's return to my conversation with my granddaughter, Alyssa. I think we're gonna to come to the end of this episode mm -hmm. of uh, my history, the history of Team Chicago, motorcycle racing team, the history of Team Chicago Challenge, the TV show. And I've been, um, I've been blessed and thank you for, for joining me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I hope you're learning as much as I'm, I'm having a great time yeah, explaining. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. Okay, well, we'll be back and uh, we're gonna continue on. Thank you, Alyssa. I'm having such a great time with these history shows. For information on Wero, Western Eastern Road Race Association is WERA.com. For the Neil King birthday, for more information, go to Donaldson.com. Contact me, it's TeamDan45 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from my audience. Remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing.